Greetings, folks. Uh, my name is Greg Keller. I'm Jump Cloud's Chief Product Officer, and I want to welcome you back to our continuing whiteboard series. Today, we're going to do uh, something that I probably should have done a long time ago. In fact, it's the, it's the example of how we got here, how Jump Cloud became Jump Cloud, what was the vision that we saw. Um, and to date, you've seen us demonstrate with our trusty whiteboard pen a number of different discrete videos, things that explain um, sections of our product, be it LDAP or Radius or our, our system agent for Mac, Windows, and Linux, et cetera. You've seen them all. Uh, in this case, I want to show you um, the, the transition, uh, the evolution of directory services. Again, the history of what was, what we saw and, and identified in the market and frankly wanted to go and address as a, you know, frankly, a uh, a very open, independent, um, and endpoint focused uh, solution for identity management and directory services. So, here we go. Today we're going to again use our trusty whiteboard pen. In fact, we're going to use two different colors just so we can augment the, uh, the as is state, what was, and how we see things changing. We'll use different colors for this. So, let's get busy. But first, what we need to do is go back in time. All right? We're going to date. Uh, ourselves, certainly myself, because I lived directly through this area. And let's go back to 2000, roughly 2000. Um, at that time, our friends in Redmond, Washington, Microsoft launched uh, domain services with their Windows Server 2000 release, 2K release. So let's basically draw a picture of what your environment looked like, and I know many of you will empathize with this. So the first thing that we'll draw is sort of your perimeter. And for many of you, this perimeter was actual brick and mortar, meaning it was your true facility that you walked into every day. Your network um, and all the connectivity between the resources was found by walking into your office. Your server cabinet was always where it was, uh, physically on premise. Uh, and everything was isolated there. Uh, and again, this is 2000, so you'll appreciate some of this. Let's talk about your environment uh, specifically, though. You walked in and you likely sat down in front of a, your desktop. And by desktop, I mean an immobile, truly tethered to a desk desktop, probably with Windows XP or 2000 running. Uh, in a stack that sat next to you, you probably put your coffee cup on it, um, but this was your, uh, your world. Your world, when you walked into the office, basically um, at, was granted to you through Windows uh, and through the magic of Kerberos and Active Directory domain services. So what that really amounted to was a Active Directory, AD, sitting at the middle of your empire. The machines, all tethered to this Active Directory domain service allowed anyone, any actor, any user to walk in between machines, do the old control alt delete, enter in your credentials, and guess what? Everything was familiar. Your file share mounts, everything that didn't matter what computer you walked up to, um, you had access because Active Directory was granting that. But what were you getting access to? So more than likely, you have a series of Windows servers and on those Windows servers are file shares. It's like your, where your home drive was, you know, my documents, right? Most often, you would have one that was on your machine, but then you'd have like an X drive, and it was mapped to where you put your big documents, so they were network accessible, uh, and that was on a Windows server, so all that was connected. Um, you clearly, at that time, pro more than likely, unless you were using Lotus Notes, you were probably using Exchange, right? Uh, which is, of course, all tethered. It's Microsoft. It's tethered to the network, authenticated through Active Directory. Um, Microsoft also had wonderful intranet-based utilities like SharePoint. So uh, you could fire up your IE browser, you know, navigate to your inter internal intranet that was authenticated through Kerberos, through your IE browser, and you get asserted directly into your bucket inside of SharePoint. So all of that was good. Um, AD also offered its own ancillary RADIUS services. We'll get back to that in a second, uh, RADIUS. 
uh, for the concept of wireless authentication, you know, right now all these guys, you know, are tethered, but we're going to come into the mobility thing in here in a second. But also, you know, AD was responsible for the classic DHCP, all the networking that, that's going on, and domain name services, meaning that AD was hosting your, you know, at mycompany.com domain that would be leveraged for exchange and for all the other, you know, for more than likely your primitive websites at the time. Um, as it relates to um, some mobility during this time, maybe uh, fast forward just a bit to 2001, two, three, you start to see the, the development um, from companies like Dell. They were taking the Windows experience and, and just in time manufacturing these things called laptops um, that could make you move around. You weren't tethered through an ethernet in your office. In fact, you could leave the office with your whole Active Directory world tethered. And it was amazing, but predicated with VPN. You had to have this tethered connectivity from your, uh, we'll just do this little Microsoft symbol here, on your Dell or you know, a similar model Windows laptop. So life is good. You start to see some flexibility. Microsoft kind of envisioning a more mobile operative workforce but then things start to change. And what are those changes? What are those things that kind of um, uh, start to break the pristine model of a domain bound network, the cloud? This is where we bring in our, our next color pen. These new colors will start to signify the changes, the things that are stretching the abilities of Active Directory and the Microsoft domain concept to do its job. So here's a good example. Let's start over here, the first sort of semblance of the cloud. In fact, I saw this living in San Francisco. You may recognize this symbol, software. Who is that? SFVC, Salesforce. They were the first to say, you know all that on-premise stuff that your, you know, your sales leadership needs, like your, your actual CRM that you've installed and you've put on a Windows server inside of your domain. Well, we just built that and you don't need to install software anymore. But the problem was this. Active Directory domain administrators found this like as a shock. They can control this, but this uh, was uh, the first form of shadow IT. You had rogue sales and or marketing teams with a credit card that could subscribe to a service, bypassing normal IT purchasing kind of models and methods. And suddenly they had this powerful tooling, but you have independent identity streams. You have a user set of user accounts here, and of course the pristine Active Directory accounts here. This is a big problem. So, especially if someone were to, you know, the internet is a wild place. Back in 2000, think of all the threats that could happen. No one's controlling stuff that you can't touch. So, companies that are investigating this problem start to materialize solutions. So, you start to see the first tethers of Active Directory to the cloud through protocols like SAML, more specifically through vendors like, you know, Ping Identity, another Colorado-based company that saw the need for an authoritative source of identity, Active Directory, I mean, who else could be the authoritative source but AD? So they were the first to really extend. So now what did IT administrators have to do? They got to buy Active Directory and they got to buy Ping and life is good and everything is secure. So it gets more sort of diverse. Then you have, um, let's take exchange. We can go around the wheel here and you'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, perhaps by you know, the late 2000s, you start to really rethink exchange as your email mechanism. So what do you need to do? You're out in the cloud again. And more than likely, you're using or choosing G Suite Again, very similar problem. How the heck do I, I have a rogue scenario here. How do I get a thousand of my employees on this new thing called G Suite? Well, yet another utility. Google 
as GADs and similar utilities. Google Apps Directory Sync. Hook it up to an LDAP, hook it up to an AD. Life is good. You're not, you know, you're continued to be tethered. But then you have other things that start, and you guys will start to see this pattern over and over again. Let's say your company starts to invest in you know, the proper cloud, like AWS. You don't want these servers anymore, right? You want, a, you want fast, reliable, and you know, rentable server space. So you start using AWS for maybe Linux computing. Windows servers aren't cutting it, not enough performance gains, you're tired of managing the licensing for them. So you got these Linux servers up in this thing called the cloud. But again, how are they getting authenticated? So another, this is yet another example of sh early shadow IT. In 1995, you have the dawn of LDAP. You have commoditized hardware now virtualized up in the cloud. You need an authentication store because this is dramatic to try and keep an Active Directory from Microsoft authenticating and tethering to Linux infrastructure. So LDAP was born and hyper-optimized for that kind of chore and use case. But again, totally independent. You don't even see a tether back to AD in many of these cases. So enter in new device types. And I know everyone who's probably watching this video, either in their pocket, on their desk, somewhere in, at their home has an Apple device. So I remember seeing my first one. It was in the, in the later 2000s. Uh, the CTO brings in this white plastic thing. We all had you know, these beautiful like Lenovo's and, and running you know, at the time probably Windows 7. And in walks this CTO with this amazing device. It was totally new. We knew Apple, but and it was, it was it, at that time just suppressed by Microsoft. Microsoft owned the enterprise and these rogue sort of artist types were using this thing called an Apple MacBook. But the MacBook and the iPhone itself, right? So you have the Apple, you have, you know, your iPhone that looks like an iPhone. And again, actually I'm not even going to tether this yet. You had these rogue people bringing in these amazing devices very often accessing corporate data totally unmanaged. There was no model. Like, again, Microsoft, Apple, what is the connectivity? Like, how does the enterprise deal with this? So in walks another series of vendors. You have, um, in order to bind and tether, you have things like mobile iron. Uh, you have a company like Jamf based in Minneapolis, a partner of ours who were consultants who then saw the idea and turned this whole policy management thing into, um, you know, there was an analog for GPOs on Windows, nothing really existed like that for Mac. So Jamf and companies like Centrify got in the game. So the pattern here is this. You have this massive ecosystem of vendors and probably those that are watching this video are those in IT. You are a sysadmin. Vendor, 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 uh, vendor, 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 vendor. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You have this disparate amount of vendor relationships and technological touch points, all that can act as threat vectors, and all to keep this one thing sort of pristine. So when you start to kind of explore this model, it comes down to how modern and sort of evolved IT people are looking at the world. They want to use Microsoft in certain use cases. More than likely, you know, on, on a Windows 10 device for certain, you know, parts of their uh, of their user base. Others are happy using Mac. Frankly, you have this Linux issue, but you need to develop a way to tether it securely to a centralized identity store. So when you look at this problem space, it's, it, you just walked into what the team and myself hypothesized um, roughly in 2013, 2014. We saw this and we were using many of these different, you know, sort of um, patches, so to speak, 
um, to, to get us connected to our central identity store. Even, admittedly, we weren't even using this. We are using Google. That was our core identity system. We didn't have any of this on-premise stuff. We were all cloud. So all of that went away. We were using G Suite to try and manage our way into managing Salesforce and some of the other things. Clearly, G Suite wasn't going to help us with our machine authentication. So that was the dawn of Jump Cloud. This is what we saw. So when we go and sort of reverse engineer this, what Jump Cloud sees is this. There is no border anymore. I mean, your network is defined virtually in many cases, meaning your network exists where your users exist. And your network exists and is authenticated and secured by your ability to have a trusted authentication source with the very protocols that you need to use the external resources you desire. That's a whole bunch of words to say, do not have your hand forced as an IT purchasing director uh, or user for that matter by a vendor. So again, independence on choice is really fundamental for us. What our world looks like is not dissimilar. Yes, Jump Cloud, if we put Jump Cloud here, is the core authentication service for your enterprise. What we don't care is what you want to connect to us. So we use various protocols. We too directly support SAML integrations with hundreds of, of applications. In the case of Windows, uh, Windows and Mac, we absolutely tether them to the authentication store. We don't, there isn't a protocol for that, but as mentioned in our other videos, we use our agents. So agents securely through a mutual TLS hyper secure connection give you that same credential source and asserting those identities out to those specific machines. Clearly DNS, you know, is we're deferring um, like you, I know you are to external sources, VeriSign, GoDaddy, etc. Um, on the case of G Suite, again, no necessitation for GAS. We have a direct API driven uh, mechanism to control G Suite uh, and it's sort of competitive kissing cousin, Office 365. And of course, Linux utilizes agents as well. Um, when we talk about LDAP, this is an interesting use case. Most, mostly the LDAP uh, use cases, less for um, Linux server management, our agent, like we use on you know, walkable mobile devices, is super efficient on high scale ephemeral Linux infrastructure. But we would have LDAP, both uh, 389 and more preferably, we support both 389 and 636, is probably being used for various apps, more than likely. And these apps can be anything. They could be a cloud-based service um, that utilizes an LDAP authentication uh, mechanism. Or it could be an on-premise resource. It could be your phone directory that needs an authentication source and also a repository of user information to preload telephone numbers and usernames, et cetera. So, uh, and of course, Jump Cloud is also in full support of its own built-in radius services. So again, what we are doing is contracting the need for you to manage all these disparate vendor relationships. We don't do it all. We don't propose to do it all, but what we do propose is that through the magic and frankly the slaving of our engineering team over these protocols, making them more robust, more secure, more scalable, more feature rich every day, we focus on the agent architecture for systems and our protocol support for all the other resource endpoints. That's where the contraction lies. Uh, and we hope you see that vision too. So again, here we are now in 2018. You can see the, 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 the concept of Microsoft Active Directory and Domain Services, absolutely brilliant. Um, what we are proposing or asserting here is it's a new age. You aren't a, as pristine as we all were in 2000 with a singular vendor controlling all of the things and all of the resource endpoints were of the same vendor. 
everything has changed. You get to pick and choose what you want. Leverage the protocols to go back to the same premise, which is an authentication store, an, an authoritative version of identity in a directory. Ours just happens to be up in the cloud, hyper secure, nothing installed on premise anymore. So there we have it. We hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you now get a sense for what the team and myself have been really excited about and really is the promise of, of so much foundational IT infrastructure. Um, and again, the jettisoning of you know, lots of antiquated mechanisms, patches, just band-aids to tether things uh, into your core authentication store. Thank you. Hope to have you back again on another whiteboard video presentation.